Here's our existing room. We have a nice window in the front of the room that allows us just walking by to gain quick access to whether or not the servers are functioning properly. And you'll see we here have here one major rack which has all of our equipment squeezed into it for right now. Uh, we've done that so that we can move our other rack down to the new space. And back in the corner you'll see our telecommunications equipment all squeezed again into one uh, tall vertical rack. If we move into the room, the first thing you'll notice is the raised floor which allows all of the electrical and other wiring to run underneath the equipment. That model re isn't really used anymore and modern equipment is all designed to have the wiring run down from the top into the rack through holes in the top but also down the back of the rack using cable management. Now we're not using it on this rack because we didn't have the room in the existing space. We didn't have the horizontal room. But here you have a rack of servers with all the different wires running through it and we've squeezed everything into one rack temporarily. Over here we have the same issue with all of the telecommunications rack, the switches and routers and firewalls and things like that. In the middle you see all the orange cables. Those are the fiber optic connections going to the rest of campus. They route around to the back here and into different boxes that go off to different directions. Keelty and Allen and Lyle and Finney and Elrican. And if you hear that whining sound, that's the whining coming from our existing single functioning air conditioning unit up there. We'll look at the compressor outside in just a minute. And over here we have a, a second unit that's currently not functioning at all. Uh, this one currently has a, a uh, blockage in the coolant line. This one has a uh, problem with the blower motor and, and the blower motor is about to burn out. But hopefully we can get another day or two out of it while we wait for parts for the other unit. Outside of our existing space, we have two on-the-ground Mr. Slim air compressors that feed the air conditioning units inside the current room. You'll see that they're in pretty rough shape, and in fact, both of them are currently failing in various ways. This one has a problem with a blower motor, with a uh, fan motor, and this one has a coolage, uh, coolant blockage somewhere in the lines. Um, the, these two units both failed, which caused our power outage in March of 2012. It's actually been such a struggle to keep this room cool with the equipment that's inside of it that we had to bring in a window air conditioning unit. Uh, thankfully we had a window to put it in just to help keep the room cool during some of our extended shutdowns. Welcome to the grand tour of the T minus one week look of our new server. Servers, switching gear, more servers. It looks fantastic. And it works. So we have one rack here for servers, another rack for networking gear, and then the third rack is not here yet, but that will also be servers. This is the hot side of the server room. The air comes in on the other side, that's the cold side, goes through the servers, gets hot because the servers are putting out a lot of heat, and then goes into this return bed right here. And then it gets cycled through the air conditioner and comes out cold again in the bed at the top. Outside of the room you see those conduit pipes that are coming through the ceiling in the inside, and the fiber optic cables in that blue cable run through a ladder cable tray management all the way around the corner of the outside of the room past our brand new air conditioning system and into these conduits that go to the outside of the building where they connect up with the conduits underground. We have our new air conditioning system which provides both cool air and relative humidity control to keep the equipment running smoothly for a long period of time. And you see we have all the new service panels, the electrical service panels and the transformer, providing us with both 480 voltage power and 208-120 voltage power. So from this corner, you can really see that we just have a room within a room built by our facilities department. They built us a 10 by 10 by 10 concrete block room, finished it off with insulation and drywall with a nice four foot wide door to bring equipment in and <clears throat> provided us with a sloped roof uh, it's a gently sloped roof on the top because of the uh, fire sprinkler heads that exist over the room in the outside room. Um, if one of those pipes were to burst or the sprinkler head were to malfunction, the room could 
easily have pooling water on the top. Um, we've also provided a couple of outlets here on the outside, controlled by a switch on the inside. Uh, provides us with generator-backed power in the event of an emergency, and also a network outlet so that we could set up out in this space here, we could set up some tables and chairs for a small uh, critical emergency command center. And just on the outside of the exterior wall, you see the red box, which is where all of the conduits from the inside of the room come into, and the pipes coming out of the bottom of that into the ground and out through the rest of campus. You can see the compressor there for the air conditioning unit, and we left plenty of space for an additional compressor, an additional air conditioning unit, if we ever need one but also for a generator, a natural gas-based generator that is going to run off of the natural gas provided from this hookup here um, to provide us with consistent, reliable power even when the rest of campus has lost power. We've also built an aesthetic privacy wall here out of matching brick so that from a distance you can't even really tell that anything has been done here um, and that will help to hide some of the equipment um, and eventually those unsightly conduits will go away.